Hello, everyone. Hi, fifth grade. It's Father Barry again, and with my co-partner. Hi, Mrs. Stevers here. I think on a lot of television shows like sports games, they usually have two announcers on. Yes. You know, but one usually thinks they're most important, and the other one's like a sidekick. So I can be the sidekick if that's okay with you. <laughs> I'd be the sidekick. You could be the heavy, okay? <laughs> doesn't matter right no but we're co-partners here <laughs> right and of course you also are the, the most valuable person in the in the in the circle here because you're the people that are watching and learning and I hope you're learning a lot of new things maybe you'll even learn some things about today's lesson you come and teach us because Jesus has sheds light on many things for many people you may have something great you learn in this lesson it's called the beatitudes it's another bible story a scripture story so it's all based on bible lesson but we're leading off with a saint uh, in the front picture there who's that saint on the front page well that's elizabeth ann seaton and i got to know all about her because i went to elizabeth's and Seton Catholic High School, and it's located right in Maryland, wow. Plainsburg, Maryland. So I learned very early uh, this courageous woman and why she was a saint. And her motto at our school was light to know, grace to do. So that's what we women, because it was an all, it's an all-girl Catholic high school here in Maryland, and uh, from very beginning we mm -hmm. learned light to know and grace to do following oh. her, yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. That grace to do, the Beatitudes is about being a, a believer, being the person that God's living inside, and you're you're going and doing something that's going to make the world happy. It's going to make the world blessed. So grace to do, I like that. And the light is God's light in you, right? Right. So the Beatitudes matches that saint. Now I know why they picked her <laughs> for the for the chapter. There you go. Can we pray? Absolutely. I usually do the psalm. Okay. And on sidekick or not, I, <laughs> I usually do the psalm as the opening prayer. And then you all do the bold print part there on the top of 165. So here we go. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray. Bless the Lord, my soul, all my being. Bless his holy name. Father, send the Holy Spirit to guide us to live as faithful members of your holy people. Amen. Amen. So where does it start? What's our first question? Well, our first question is, where do you think true happiness comes from? Where do you think true happiness comes from? So, hmm. I'm, I mean, I would think definitely true happiness comes from God, but to be happy in your heart, it has to come from yourself also or from your family or people that's supporting you. You have to say yes inside for the good things to Make you happy. build up yeah, and, that's, yeah. and then get lived out. But you have to say yes. If you don't want good things, if you want bad things, the bad things are going to come out of you. You know, right, yes. If you're really, really selfish, you're not going to be spreading a lot of happiness around. Okay? Right, that's right. But really, inside, human beings are meant to be blessed. They're meant to be happy. They're meant to be good. That's what we're supposed to be. Yeah, and not everybody is, though, in the world. But let's say that Jesus comes down to the world and says, how about doing these eight things? <laughs> okay, the Beatitudes. Can I just give you eight things to think about? that would make the world blessed, that would make the world happy. And you've got the Beatitudes. Everyone wants to be happy, it says in that little paragraph on your page. Everyone spends their whole life seeking happiness. Jesus taught the Beatitudes to help us learn the true meaning of happiness. All right, so where happiness comes from, what's the other question on there? It says, what are the Beatitudes? So they might not even realize. They've probably heard of the Beatitudes, but what are the Beatitudes? Yeah, so fifth graders, you may not, but after this chapter, in a, ma in a matter of a half an hour, you will know what the Beatitudes are. 
your parents or adults may already know this, learned it over and over again, but this may be the first official time you learn about it, so I hope it'll be a blessing to you. So I made something in my book, and we'll pause for a second. I'm going to open up my book and show it to you how I remember Oh, good. <laughs> the Beatitudes. Oh, great. That's always fun. <laughs> yeah, you're going to like this, uh, Luke, <laughs> Mrs. Stever. Okay. Uh, so I drew a bee flying around. Now, the word is Beatitudes, okay? Mm hmm But there's another way of hearing it. Beatit, dudes. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> That's be perfect. Beatit, dudes. And then for girls, Beatit, dudesses. <laughs> Perfect. You know? Yes. And that makes us smile. And the bee is smiling. And yes. he's a bee. He's a beatitude bee. He's going to help you remember the eight beatitudes, you know. So I did a retreat for people, including fifth graders. And I had two teenagers dress up in bee costumes. Oh, that's great. They even painted their face gold. And <laughs> they wore these wiry ball things on the top. And they had crazy outfit. We had rented them from some, you know, one of those costumes. Sure, they had places. wings, little wings, yeah. and that's great. And it wasn't anywhere near Halloween either. It was oh, just, God. You know, but yeah. they, they even had little stingers on the back, but it didn't work. <laughs> like, it couldn't sting you. But they were helping people learn the eight Beatitudes, and one of them, like, was blessed are the meek, okay? And that's what she just taught. We'll, we'll cover that in a little bit. But blessed are the meek is, you know, the blessed are those who are considerate. You know? Sure. You know? Blessed are those who are kind, okay? So Jesus was meek. Jesus was kind. Uh, sometimes you know who a meek person is when they say, oh, no, no, you first, please. Right. So yeah. today I was letting you be the most important, <laughs> I'd be the sidekick. I was trying to be meek. There you go. Yes. You know? Yep. And, yep. But it's like, oh, no, go ahead, you first. So no, no, after you. That's you know? right, yes. But that's a, a meek person brings happiness in the world because they're being considerate. They're being kind. And kindness makes the planet a better place. So if it's going to be being meek, be at it, dudes. <laughs> be at it. All right, now we're ready to turn the page and okay. get started. Okay, let's start with this chapter. Okay, boys and girls. Bible background. So we're on that page of 166. And the faith focus is going to be, how do the Beatitudes help us make decisions to live as Christians? And then in this chapter, the vocabulary for our faith vocabulary you're going to hear about is Sermon on the Mount, the teachings of Jesus that are grouped together in chapters 5, 6, and 7 of the Gospel of Matthew, and then Beatitudes, the sayings or teachings of Jesus that are found in the Sermon on the Mount that describe both the qualities and the actions of people blessed by God. Okay, let's read it together. I'll read it out loud, but you follow it, okay? The Sermon on the Mount. During his life on earth, Jesus taught his disciples many things. He gave his disciples concrete guidelines on how he wanted them to live. Matthew has gathered many of the teachings of Jesus in chapters 5, 6, and 7 of his gospel. This part of Matthew's gospel is called the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount begins with the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are the sayings or the teachings of Jesus that describe both the qualities and the actions of people blessed by God. The words blessed and kingdom are the key to understanding Jesus' teachings in the Beatitudes. Blessed, the Jewish people described people who are trusted and hoped in God above everyone and everything else as blessed. Kingdom. The Jewish people living in Jesus' time were under the rule of the Romans. They wanted to be free of that rule and prayed that God would establish the kingdom he had promised to Abraham, Moses, and David. Jesus' listeners and disciples hoped that Jesus would bring about 
that kingdom. Let's look at the picture in the top right corner, and it has participants signing up for the Walk for Hunger. And it was a walk that was done in this particular picture in Boston, Massachusetts. So those people were doing one of the Beatitudes that you're gonna learn about. And there they are for the Walk for Hunger, and they must have walked so many you know, miles and probably fundraised and all the monies probably went right there to the Walk for Hunger in the Boston, Massachusetts area. At the bottom, we're gonna be doing an activity. So let's read what the activity is. And as we're reading what you're to do, get a hold of your pencil or maybe a crayon or a marker. Describe some of the ways you seek happiness. Are these ways that God would call blessed? So think about in your life, what are ways that you try to get happiness? And are they ways that you feel God would call these ways blessed? We'll give you some time to do that. And then when we come back, Father Barry will be reading the Word of God and actually reading the full Beatitudes from Scripture. So... Hopefully you took a little time there to fill out ways that you seek happiness. The idea is to pause the tape, okay, or stop the tape and fill it out, okay? Ways that, that I seek happiness, <clears throat> well, I try to see something good that's going to happen each day or at the end of the day to look at something I chose to do that was good. And I know that I feel happy if I can find a thing that it's good to do, you know? So, um, so I made a meal for somebody. I made a meal just to give them something to eat and visit. And it made me feel happy because I did something good for them. And they felt important and they felt great that they could eat. Um, so that's a way of, of you know, being happy. I, you know, I used to make sandwiches when my, when I was like fifth grade. I had a brother in kindergarten, and then I had three little sisters. But my brother and I would go to school, and my little sister would kind of go to like a pre-K, and so I would make the sandwiches for them. I used to like making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Everybody liked them, and I would make them a certain way and then I would cut them into triangles because uh, it's just a different way of cutting a sandwich. And I would wrap it up. And uh, I always felt good in doing that job. You know, I did. I felt good. Now we go to the Beatitudes on page 167. And, you know, when I think of what you were saying, Mrs. Stever, Beatitudes, I think of wise sayings. That these are eight things that Jesus said that are up on the mountain that were very wise, and I can just imagine Matthew, who's wrote it down here, saying, uh, Jesus, that's wise. <laughs> that's really smart. That's awesome. I like that saying, you know? All eight of them. He would have said, wow, that's wise. I can picture maybe Matthew in, in, the, in your book, uh, all the apostle friends of Jesus and some of the women followers, are around him and he was up on a mountain sort of like Moses when he got his Ten Commandments he was up on a mountain and now Jesus is coming with eight special things up on the mountain and here they are Jesus traveled through Judea Galilee and Judea preaching the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God one day a crowd followed Jesus up a mountainside in Galilee seeing the crowd he began to teach them and he said you ready? The blue is scripture. Let's pray it, pray it together. We're not just reading it, really. We're praying it because it's like a, like a prayer. It's a teaching prayer. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for 
they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, verses 3 to 12. If you have a Bible and you can open it up to Matthew chapter 5, you'll see this is the highlighted story. And the start of Jesus' teaching, he teaches in Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 8. One of the most famous places, the biggest places for Jesus' teachings are all right there in the Bible in Matthew. And it's called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus concluded by telling his listeners that living the Beatitudes would not be easy. People would make fun of them and even persecute them. He told them to have the courage to live the Beatitudes. If they did, they would discover happiness. He said, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. It's asking you in the bottom, describe a person you know or have learned about who lives the Beatitudes. Well, I think of a person. His name is David, okay? I went to school with David. And one of the things about David is he would not say bad words. He he would not say bad words even when it was popular. You can say a bad word and shout it out and everybody laughs, okay? And you get all the attention. Ah, he said the bad word. Ah, ha, ha, isn't that great? He's popular for a second, okay? Not David. David did not get any popularity or attention for doing something that was wrong with his words. He didn't. He just didn't choose to say it. In fact, I don't really think he thought of it too much. If he did, he blocked it from getting here, out here, out of his mouth. I don't think he had any uh, of it in his heart. I don't think he wanted to use those words, even though other people did. He wanted to be different because he thought it would please God. Blessed are the clean of heart. I think David was clean of heart. And he made an impact on my life, too. I don't say bad words either. Now we'll go to page 168. And Mrs. Stever will go through what those great eight be at it dudes are. <laughs> Understanding the Word of God, page 168. OK, you with me, fifth graders? Okay, at the very top, the blessed. What Jesus' listeners did not yet understand was that the kingdom of God or the happiness that Jesus was speaking about was not a kingdom of power on earth. It was a different kind of kingdom. By understanding the meaning of each of the Beatitudes, we can better understand Jesus' teachings on what it means to be truly blessed by God. The poor in spirit. People who are poor in spirit placed all their trust in God. Those who mourn. People who mourn have suffered a loss in their lives. They are strong because they know God is always with them. The meek. People who are meek are considerate. They treat others kindly and respectfully. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. These people work so that everyone is treated fairly and justly. The merciful. 
Merciful people are generous and kind to others. The clean of heart. The clean of heart place God above everyone and everything else in their lives. The peacemakers. Peacemakers work to solve problems without harming anyone and to build the kind of world God wants. Those persecuted for righteousness, people who work for righteousness, do what God wants even when it's very difficult to do so. The Beatitudes are guides for living as Jesus taught us to live. All our actions show that we live for the kingdom Jesus announced was at hand. The rewards promised to the blessed will be received in the kingdom of God. Let's take time and do this activity. And in the blue writing, it has the headline, Workers Meet to Settle Salary Demands. Might describe the beatitude, Blessed are the Peacemakers. Create a headline for one of the Beatitudes. So we're going to have you stop the video and look and create a, a banner, a headline for Beatitudes in Action. And I think I'm going to do the same while you do that. So what I wrote down, and I hope you were able to write something down, hopefully it was something that you yourself uh, looked at and thought, well, I'm one of those Beatitudes. I'm more than one of those Beatitudes. I'm starting to live a life that Jesus wants me to do, and that would be a good thing. So whatever you wrote would be wonderful, but I just happened to pick, you know, to, for those that are hungry and thirsting for righteousness, those that need us to help them, and sometimes we forget that even just one can of food for somebody that might be very hungry is just a way to help another person, another human being that you would hope if you were hungry, they would help you. So my banner just says, bring a can of soup to feed others. And so that was the one that I picked. We're now going to have Father um, go with our church makes a difference. And it looks like we're going to talk about Habitat for Humanity, which we even at our parish has done in Montgomery County, Habitat for Humanity. So it'll be an interesting page of our chapter to learn about. I think St. John here in the picture, one of Matthew's friends, who was also there listening to the Beatitudes, I think he would have said, like Matthew, that is so wise, Jesus. That is so wise. These eight things could change the world if people did them. Blessed are the merciful who show mercy. If we could have forgiveness and caring going on, instead of being harsh with each other and sinning against each other, that would be amazing. So St. John, he would say, that's wise. We need to live that way. On page 169, you see a bunch of volunteers. They're not getting paid. They're volunteering their time to be house repair people. They're repairing a house, okay? And that's a nice thing that they're doing. I think you could say maybe blessed are those who mourn because maybe this house got damaged in a, in a storm or something, a hurricane, okay, a tornado and they're coming to fix it. The people who live there, maybe they're elderly and they can't fix it or they don't have the money. But these people are coming in saying, we'll do it for free if you just give us the permission. And if you can make some lemonade for us, <laughs> or iced tea or coffee, so we could have a drink while we're working and use your bathroom, but we'll fix this whole house up. You could also be blessed are the merciful because they could say, we're here for forgiveness. They'd say, forgiveness? I don't think we did anything wrong to you. Oh, no, ma'am. No, sir, you didn't do anything wrong to us. The world did something wrong to you. We've let you be poor. 
we, we, we uh, forgive us for letting maybe the rich people forget about the poor people. So we're here to help the poor people. Yes, I've seen the habitat of humanity go to the most poor people that have just really awful looking houses and properties and they're living so badly and they don't have air conditioning and they don't have much heat and the walls are very thin and everything's falling apart and the plumbing isn't working and the lights aren't working right because they don't have any money and they say forgive us that you are poor and we're here to try to make a difference and make things fair again this whole job will get done by us just because we want to show our love for you and that is being blessed that's a beatitude as we read Habitat for Humanity International is a Christian housing organization. It brings together Catholic and other Christian volunteers to work together for justice and righteousness. They build, quote, simple, decent, and affordable housing in partnership with those in need of adequate housing. Habitat for Humanity volunteers have built more than 150,000 homes all over the world. This includes more than 50,000 in the United States. These homes are for people who cannot afford to buy a home of their own. Habitat for Humanity volunteers build homes for people of all races, religions, and ethnic groups. Their work is a sign of God's love for all people and helps all people place their trust in Him. You can imagine the happiness that families feel when they move into a home built or rebuilt or fixed back up for Habitat for Humanity. There's other groups too that do things like this. I know that not, I've helped at doing something like that. I know my sister has, does it every year and now she's pretty good at it and my niece too is pretty good at doing things and fixing up a home you know there's something that is called victory housing here in the Washington area and it's it's homes for people who are seniors elderly I won't call them old <laughs> but people who are much much older and they they have to live in a place that doesn't cost as much money and they need a place where other people can watch over them and take care of them and it's called victory housing there's a whole bunch of them in the washington dc area where even a priest friend of mine now who's um, in his 80s he lives there we priests don't make a lot of money and when we retire we don't have a lot of money and he moved into one of those houses where they, it doesn't matter if you don't have much money. The work is done for you and you don't have to work. You don't have to be concerned. So that's our, how does your parish help build a better world by living the Beatitudes? Well, we're involved in these kind of a things and we try to get young people to get started, but you can figure it out yourself. There may be a way that you're hungry and thirsty for something right to happen Maybe there's something you see is wrong and you say something right should happen. I know a fifth grader, she just said, there's too many animals that don't have any home, don't have anyone to love them. And they said, when we go get a pet, mom or dad, mom and dad said, yes, you can get a pet. Let's go to a place where the animals need to be adopted, where the animals have not had a good home before, where they're just wandering around with anyone caring for them. And so you come home with a dog that may not be exactly, you know, it, it may have had some problems in the past or, or sick or something. And you just start loving that dog and that dog thinks, wow, I have found the perfect house to live in now. Boy, do they care about me and I have a lot of fun and the dog's happy and wagging his tail all the time. Because somebody was hungry and thirsty to have a good change happen and the world gets blessed and the dog especially is happy. Okay, boys and girls, 
Before we begin, what difference does faith make in my life? I just want to add to what Father Barry was saying because now that you're in fifth grade, you're going to be able to do things with um, the parish that we do with young people, fifth grade to high schoolers. And we do a lot, like Father Barry said, all around locally. But then we also, when you get just a little older, you can go with us and travel, and it's Catholic Heart Work Camp is usually what we do. But we do things like where we help either somebody that needs their house redone or a, um, maybe some type of a ramp for them if they need that done. Uh, if we travel, and we travel all around the United States and help that. But what we do with the parish every year is we have a service work camp in the summer, and you're able to participate in it and live out the Beatitudes. We help children and the elderly. We help the environment and animals. Um, Montgomery County has Habitat for Humanity, and we do locally. Just right up the road from the parish, we actually helped build townhouses. And what's wonderful about Habitat for Humanity is the families that are gonna get their homes, they help also. So our young people got to meet the people who they were helping and they would bring just sandwiches and because they were younger and the adults would help build it from the parish. And then we got to meet the families that got the key to their front door, which was really beautiful. And we prayed with them, so it's very nice. So just keep looking for different ways that you can live out the Beatitudes. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the page. When you live the Beatitudes, you are assigned to others what it means to be blessed by God. You have your eyes on living in the kingdom of heaven. And as we've said, as we've read the pages of this chapter, in many ways you are living out Beatitudes every day on choices that you're making or you're learning about some Beatitudes that now you can help. Each of these actions in one way of living a Beatitude Think about two actions described below. Then name the beatitude it puts into action and write one way you have lived that beatitude. So we're gonna do it together. You don't have to pause the video. I may pause a little bit for five seconds or whatever, but just get your pencil. I put two answers down, but there's some of Beatitudes that could actually, you could put in its place, might not match mine, but I'll let you know what I said. So the action says, you are kind to someone others are picking on. So think of the Beatitudes and what would be one Beatitude there, the first column. First think about what would be a Beatitude that we're learning about on you are kind to someone others are picking on. So I put, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And then under the column, how I lived that beatitude out. So how did you help that person that was getting picked on? And I just put, you're kind to someone, you always help others who are treated unfairly. And you try and help them know that they are good human people and that they were being treated unfairly. And you stand up for them. And that's a beatitude. The other is, you listen to someone you disagree with and together you solve your problem. So I'm, I know between family life and with your friends, that might happen a lot. And so what beatitude would you be living out? And I put blessed are the peacemakers. So that would be if there's someone who disagrees with something with you and you decide you are gonna go ahead and be the peacemaker and how did you do that? You lived it by listening to them, listening to others and reminding yourself and remembering to live as Jesus wants you to do and just talking and listening 
about something that maybe you can see their side as you disagree with it. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at my faith choice at the bottom of the page. I believe that the Holy Spirit calls me to live the Beatitudes, and this week I will. So that, again, is something just write it as we're getting ready to turn to the next page of We Pray, but write down something you know that you can live out this week. You know where, where you're involved and what's going on in your life, right? And so what can you do to live out a beatitude this week? And make sure you make the commitment to go ahead and do that. Okay, we're going to be joined by Father Barry, and we're going to all together pray together. So let's go to page 171 at the top of the page. And then Father Barry and I, he'll lead us in the prayer to live the beatitudes. Well, thank you. That was good. And the prayer time, we always get to a prayer when we've reflected and thought through and studied. Mm -hmm. We try to pray it. Now, the, the prayer of the Beatitudes will just be changing the words just a little bit to help you understand again what each of them is about. So, I get to be leader. Okay. I'm meek, but I also can be a leader in this moment, right? That's right. Okay. In yes. a prayer petition, we ask God to help us live for the kingdom of God. Pray this prayer petition. Ask God to help you live the Beatitudes. Loving Father, help send us the Holy Spirit. Teach us to be poor in spirit. That we will receive the gift of the kingdom of God, of to heaven. Teach us to mourn. That we will receive the gift of your comfort. Teach us to be meek. That we will inherit the earth. Teach us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. That we will be satisfied. Teach us to be merciful. That we will be shown mercy. Teach us to be clean of heart. That we will see you. Teach us to be peacemakers. That we will be called children of God. Teach us to have courage when we are treated harmfully because of our love for you. That we will receive the gift of the kingdom of heaven. Well, there's a... The study part now is finished. Now try to remember what we taught. So I see that there's five of the Beatitudes down there at the bottom, and you have to match them up. Right. So five out of the eight are down there. What do you think? Do you think they'll get them? Oh, I hope so. Get, you know, that I think so. Okay, we'll see if they get them. Okay. So we're going to match the parts of the Beatitudes. So number one. Do you remember now when we were learning them? And you can almost even look at the one our prayer above if hey, you need some help. Yeah, right. Yeah. Blessed are the meek. So let's go down and just let's look and see. Blessed are the meek. And letter D, for they will inherit the land. Letter D. Yeah, and there's a couple others that probably could go in there, but we're going to put D. And then number two, blessed are the peacemakers. And what did we say when we read the scripture from Matthew? For they will be called children of God. Okay, so you have D and E. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So letter A. You may already have finished, maybe not. Blessed are the clean of heart. Blessed are the clean of heart. They will see God. So the letter B. And then blessed are the they who mourn. Blessed are they who mourn. And you only have one letter left, but you should know, for they will be comforted, mourn and comforted. So you're, it should look like a D-E-A-B-C. 
okay? And I, I think you probably did a really good job at this one mm, because we've yeah. learned just the beautiful way to live our lives and beatitudes, and I think you can match it and why because of the scripture. Mm. I'm, I, I'm remembering right now of a uh, time in the parish. I was a pastor, and it was Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And after Mass, you know how you come out from the church and you're outside talking a while before you get in your car. And sure. We noticed a lot of smoke in the sky. There was a fire somewhere in the neighborhood. We had heard the fire engines during Mass going by, but um, so there was a fire, and it... Uh, pretty much burned up the whole downstairs of a person's house, all their bedrooms, kitchen, um, front door, the windows all had to get broken to get in. Oh, goodness. So the people were actually at home when the fire started. They were still asleep. Oh, gosh. And it turned out to be people from our parish, okay? And somebody was going by and saw the fl flames, and they came and they woke the people up in the house. And those people were able to get out of their house. And uh, a neighbor called the fire department. So they were on their way. The, the people ran out of the house. And all they could do is take a few clothes with them, just whatever they could quickly grab before the fire got to be too strong. And after a while, the fire was taken over their whole bedroom. So they got out of the house on the front lawn, and then the fire trucks came. And so we found out after church was over that that house was somebody from our parish well the people mourned that we're very sad that somebody we know had their big fire in their house right so you know what they did they did beatitudes i think two of the beatitudes here they cared enough that some people said well let's all volunteer and help this family so someone said we'll let them live in our house we have a big house lots of rooms wow and we'll let them live in our house as long as they want, almost a year. Wow, that's wonderful. Then um, other people said, well, you don't have to cook meals for them all the time. We'll cook meals. In fact, we'll cook a meal for the guest family and for you, the, those who are hosting them. So all these people started cooking meals, okay? They, they were mourning, okay? Um, and the other thing is blessed are those who want things to be right righteousness they want things to be right mm -hmm. and you'll be satisfied you know everybody was satisfied because after a year that house got fixed up the family moved back in and they had a whole year of people giving them clothes and food and shelter and everybody was so satisfied that we all helped out yeah that's you know? amazing yeah but i think with god too is he looked at it and he said look at the way they cared they mourned with their love mm -hmm. and they did something and it says, they shall be comforted. You know what kind of comfort we're going to get? Because Jesus says, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. If you do these things, you get heaven. In heaven, he's going to say, oh, let me comfort you. Come on in, and I can show you the river, the, the waterfalls where you're going to take your showers now. And the lakes you'll be able to swim in. And don't worry, everybody knows how to swim in heaven. And be refreshed and comforted. And Look at the mansion I'm giving to you to live in, okay? And look at all the fruits and the beautiful uh, plants and life and the beautiful smells. Uh, I'm going to comfort you with everlasting life because you care for someone down on the world. I'm going to care for you forevermore in heaven. That's what the Beatitudes are about. So the Beatitudes show ways Jesus wants his disciples to live. It's a great way to live. That's why I love being Catholic. The Beatitudes are sayings, or like I said, wise sayings. The Beatitudes are wise sayings of Jesus that describe the qualities and actions of people blessed by God. And number three, the Beatitudes guide us to prepare the way for the coming of the kingdom of God, which will come about at the end of time. Uh, now in the back of my book, I've updated the picture of the bee. Oh, you did? Okay. I did, so I'm going to update it just a okay. little bit. So the bee that was in the beatitude. This is looking good. Okay. Yes. 
In fact, I found a name for the bee. The, the name is Bee, B-E-A. You ever heard of a girl's name named oh, Bee? Oh, like, almost like a Beatrice, but yeah, a B-E-A. Like Beatrice, okay, but got bee. it. We just okay. call her Bee. Bee, sounds hey, great. Bee is still smiling because now <laughs> she's heaven bound. Wonderful. Okay? She's a bee added, do this. <laughs> okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Beatitudes, wise ways to live and become blessed and get heaven bound. So she, so B lived them. So she lived it out. She lived them out, and she got to fly to heaven. Something that that yep. uh, I didn't know bees could fly that high, but <laughs> she just kept soaring right up to heaven. That's wonderful. Yep, it's great. Well, let's go to chapter 19 in the very last page, boys and girls, which is 172. Okay, and get your parent with you. And it's the, the part of the chapter where it's with my family. Okay, so parents, please read it more thoroughly, but I'll just cover it. It's the page where you just continue what we've just begun in this chapter with your child. And it has sharing God's word. So read together Matthew and emphasize that Jesus taught the Beatitudes to identify people who were truly blessed by God. And then praying, we just did just a beautiful prayer with the Beatitudes, living out the Beatitudes that you could do together as a family anytime during the week, and then continue even reading it, praying it. It's in uh, on page 171. We just did it together as a class. So you could look that prayer up and do it together. Making a difference, they give us wonderful activities as a family you could do, or perhaps you might have something that you know would work perfectly with living out the Beatitudes this week. I highlight the one, we live the Beatitudes when we are peacemakers. Name ways that you can live as peacemakers at home, at school, at work, and in your community. That will give you an opportunity through your life and as busy and all the noise to just kind of calm things down and remind each other throughout family life, community life, parish life, school life, how you can be a peacemaker and you can discuss ways that you know you could do that together. So Father Barry, can we close this week with a prayer or a blessing? And um, this was a really nice chapter. I enjoyed teaching a little bit about this chapter and it always is good to relearn those beatitudes. Yes, it very is. So I pray that you and I can be beatitude people. And I pray that we will always keep faith first. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your week. God bless you. As my parents used to say, toodaloo. I think it means see ya. <laughs> toodaloo. Cheerio.